Item Number SCP-3775 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures No one is to enter SCP-3775 Description SCP-3775 is a large, four bedrooms, four bathrooms, house situated on a mountaintop near Tazewell, Virginia. It has two above-ground stories, a fully furnished basement, second-floor balconies at the front and back, a two-car garage, and an in-ground swimming pool in the backyard. On June 13, 1976, multiple crimes, injuries, and deaths occurred during a house party at SCP-3775. Each year, between 9.14 p.m and 2.45 a.m. on the anniversary of this event, the lights within SCP-3775 will turn on, and loud rock music will emanate from within. No further anomalous activity will occur unless someone enters the house during this period. This has only been attempted once. Addendum 1 – Exploration SCP-3775's anomalous behavior was first observed in 1977. A remotely controlled vehicle equipped with a camera was sent inside, but its presence did not trigger any additional activity. As such, this exploration revealed only one piece of information that the police investigation did not. The sound system in the living room, from which the loud music originated, was of the Syncope Symphony brand. When questioned, the owners of the house were not able to recall the circumstances of its purchase. During the 1978 activation, D-2751 was sent inside to investigate. He was equipped with a body camera and a noise-canceling headset that would both protect his hearing and allow him to communicate with control. Security officers Marvin and Ortega were positioned in front of and behind the house, respectively, to facilitate quick extraction if D-2751 was in danger. Begin log. Sounds like a hell of a party in there. Is your hearing protection functioning properly? Huh? Is your hearing protection functioning properly? <sighs> yeah. Enter the house. Okay, here goes. D-2751 opens the door. Without its muffling effects, the music is now recognizable as Kiss's Rock and Roll All Night. This song continues on loop for the remainder of the exploration. The house remains mostly as it was left in 1976. Garbage, debris, and clothing is scattered across the floor throughout. Oh yeah, definitely a hell of a party. Anywhere specific you want me to go, or...? You can start with the living room. D-2751 continues into a hallway. Entrances to a living room and dining room lie to his left. To his right, the hallway passes two flights of stairs, one going up, the other down, and several doors before terminating in an exterior door. Another branch leads to the back door. Turning left, D-2751 enters the living room. The upholstery is badly stained, and the glass coffee table has been shattered. The music is almost too loud for control to hear D-2751. Can you turn off the music? D-2751 approaches the sound system, a multi-track stereo flanked by two large speakers. He presses the power button on the stereo, and the music stops. Hey, do you hear that? The stereo abruptly turns back on, playing more loudly than before. D-2751 is startled. Hear what? Uh, I thought I heard voices. Downstairs, maybe. Here, let me... Carefully, D-2751 turns the volume knob, but it has no discernible effect on the music. Uh, do you think unplugging the thing would make any difference? Probably not. The house shouldn't even have electricity. D-2751 looks up at the chandelier on the ceiling. A pink bra dangles from it. Huh. See if you can find the source of the voices. Uh, sure. D-2751 walks towards the hall, pauses, and sidetracks into the kitchen instead. A pile of empty pizza boxes rots on the counter, and the toppled trash can is overflowing with more food debris. The sink is filled with broken plates and glasses. No insects or other vermin are present. What are you doing? D-2751 retrieves a large knife from the countertop knife block. Just taking some precautions. Now armed, he proceeds quickly through the dining room and back into the hall. A beer pong game has been set up on the dining room table, and shards of antique china crunch underfoot. After exiting the dining room, he descends the stairs. They bring him to another hallway, which turns around a corner to his left and ends at two doors to his right. The voices are coming from behind one of these doors, but their words are not clearly distinguishable. 
D2751 takes a deep breath and swiftly opens the door. The lights are off in the room beyond, but it is still faintly illuminated by a massive television against the wall. The TV is playing a movie. Footnote 1. Carrie, 1976. At high volume, apparently the source of the voices. Seeing this, D2751 relaxes. He flips the light switch beside the door, revealing various pieces of comfortable furniture and speakers along the walls. Popcorn and other snacks litter the floor. Uh, false alarm, guys. Just a movie. I don't think I've seen this one. Continue exploring the basement, since you're down there. Hey. Hey, you got it, boss. After emerging from the movie room, D2751 opens the other door in the hallway, revealing a closet filled with dusty toys and board games. D2751 heads in the other direction and rounds the corner, finding more doors. The first, on his left, is open. Beyond it is a large game room, containing air hockey, foosball, and billiards tables. This guy was living. He circles the room, examining the classic movie posters that decorate the walls. Uh, you know, I never got to go to any parties like this in school. Uh, not if my friends were rich enough for this shit. I figured I'd get to go in college, but, well, you know. Idly, he picks up the eight ball and tosses it into the air a few times. <laughs> it's funny, that's one of the things that really bugged me in the big house. I never got a chance to go to one of those crazy parties like you see in the movies. Yeah, but I could party as much as I want once you guys let me out, right? Please continue the exploration. Yeah, yeah. He returns the eight ball to its place and continues down the hall. The other two doors are locked, and the lights inside these rooms seem to be off. Footnote 2. An office and a small personal gym. Hey, you want me to break in? Not right now. Head back upstairs. You got it. Once upstairs, D2751 investigates the interior doors in the hallway. One leads to the two-car garage, currently empty, and the other to a large storage room. He does not enter, either. The door to one of the upstairs bedrooms slams shut, forcefully enough to be heard over the music. The lights flicker. Go see what that was. Um, yeah, you sure? Yes. Still holding the knife, D2751 ascends the stairs. You know, this place seems kind of familiar. On the second floor, a hallway wraps around the stairs and runs down the center of the house. Five doors open from it, and two branches leading to sliding glass doors that connect to the front and rear balconies. As D2756 reaches the top of the stairs, one of these doors slides open of its own accord. A strong breeze blows in. D2756 steps carefully onto the rear balcony, which runs the length of the house and overlooks the swimming pool. He stands at the railing and looks down at the drained pool. Hey, you know, I bet I could jump in there from here. Do not do that. Do what? Jump off the balcony. Why the hell would I do that? You were just talking about it. What? No, I wasn't. Yes, you... Never mind, just go check out that bedroom. D2776 steps inside and closes the balcony door. He continues down the hall, heading for the closed bedroom door at the end. After almost a minute of walking, D2776 has only covered about five feet. He stops beside the door to a large bathroom. What the hell? You might be in some kind of spatial distortion. You're still covering ground though, so just keep going. D2776 looks down the hall again, then back at the stairs. He takes two steps towards the stairs, and upon reaching them in the expected time, sighs with relief. Then he continues trying to traverse the hallway. Along the way, he passes three other bedrooms. Each is in disarray, with bedside lamps knocked over, sheets twisted or flung aside, and clothing littering the floor. After 14 minutes of continuous walking, D2976 reaches the closed door. His gait has become noticeably unsteady. 2976, are you okay? Yeah, I... <clears throat> oh, excuse me, I, uh, I feel like kind of tipsy. Are you able to continue? Yeah. Yeah, I already made it to the door. Try to open it. Well, hell, don't you think I should knock first? Sure. D2776 
knocks on the door to no discernible response. He tries the doorknob, but the door is locked. Try listening at the door. D2976 places the headset around his neck and puts his ear against the door. Hey, what the fuck? Hey! He tries the knob again and pounds aggressively on the door. Hey, what are you doing? D2976 continues to rattle the doorknob, but it still won't turn. He places his ear against the door again. What's happening? D2976 does not appear to hear control. He crouches down to peer through the keyhole. Video and audio of the next 13 seconds are obscured by static. Control did not report any disruption at the time. Oh, no, 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 that wasn't me! I didn't do that, it wasn't! D1976 screams and falls backwards. He drops the knife and crawls back down the hall on his hands and knees. Using the wall to support himself, D1976 struggles to his feet. He stumbles into the bathroom near the stairs and falls to his knees in front of the toilet. He frantically raises the lid, revealing a bowl that is already almost overflowing with fresh vomit. D1976 lurches towards the bathtub and pukes into it instead. D1976 sits back against the wall opposite the toilet. He groans nauseously and attempts to catch his breath. Behind the house, Officer Ortega reports that a thick substance is dripping from the end of the diving board. He does not investigate. D1976, can you hear me? D1976 seems to remember the headset and puts it back on. Uh, what happened? I don't know what you would fucking happen. Is this some kind of trick? I don't know what you're talking about. What did you see behind the- oh, Fuck this! D1976 tears off the headset and flings it into the shower. For this reason, all remaining audio from the headset consists of muffled music. Slowly, D1976 staggers to his feet. He stumbles out of the bathroom and towards the stairs. On the third step, he trips and falls the rest of the way down. D1976 lies stunned or unconscious at the bottom of the stairs for almost a minute. During this time, the music grows continuously louder, and the lights take on an increasingly yellow tint. Ortega reports that the rate of dripping from the diving board has increased. Smoky haze begins to fill the house. The record skips, repeating the chorus over and over again. An unidentifiable teenager walks into view of the body camera. It is standing directly in front of the glass back door, but is not visible from outside the house. The teenager gazes disinterestedly down at D1976. After a few seconds, it raises a red plastic cup and pours the contents on him. D1976 wakes up. The teenager wanders out of the body camera's view and is not seen again. D1976 climbs back to his feet. He wobbles to the front door and tries to open it, but it seems to be stuck. He starts pounding on it and shouting for help. Officer Marvin requests permission to extract the subject, which is denied by control. Ortega sees the back door shatter. D1976 hears the sound and moves towards it. The smoke inside is now thick enough to significantly impede vision, but none of it escapes through the shattered door. D1976 exits the house and staggers along the pool deck, wiping his eyes and coughing loudly. Seemingly unintentionally, he stumbles out onto the diving board. He stops at the very end of the board and looks down. The swimming pool, which was drained after the house's abandonment, is 12 feet deep beneath the diving board. It currently holds only a few inches of stagnant rainwater, which has been turned red by the substance dripping from the board. It seems unnaturally bright in the pool bottom lights. D1976 looks up at Officer Ortega. There is something wrong with his face. His voice, no longer slurred, can be clearly heard despite the distance and the overwhelming volume of the music. Great party, isn't it? D1976's knees buckle. The back of his head collides with the diving board as he falls, landing face down in the bloody water 12 feet below. All activity in the house abruptly ceases. End log. Addendum 2. Post analysis. The blood from the swimming pool was of the same type as D1976's. D1976 was dead when the guards retrieved him. Cause of death was found to be drowning. His blood alcohol content was 0%. D1976 
D1976's records state that prior to his recruitment as a Class D personnel, he had been sentenced to life imprisonment for crimes committed during the 1976 house party at SCP-3775. Testing him with the object was therefore a breach of cross-contamination protocols. It is not clear why this was permitted, or why personnel assigned to SCP-3775 were unaware of the connection. It is likewise unclear how D-1976 failed to recognize his own home. Thank you all so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, The Bone Man, Rubbishbin69, Tannis, Ruler of All, and Doomsday LLC, Prince and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.